the science of nutrition. Now, there's a lot of science that goes into nutrition. So that's what we need to explore today. So when we start thinking about the science of nutrition, well, one of the things we're trying to do is make sure that your diet matches the five characteristics of a high quality diet. So the first characteristic is adequacy. Make sure you get enough and an adequate enough amount of nutrients. You have balance. You have to balance across all the macro and micronutrients. You can't just say, I'm getting a whole lot of carbs and leave everything else out of it. Doesn't really work the best that way. Caloric control. Now let's say that you figured out you need 2,132 calories in a day. I just picked a number, it doesn't make anything. How do you get those calories? Are you get those calories by eating a couple dozen donuts? You could, but would that be a very healthy way to do it? No. Or maybe you're looking at a balanced diet, but then you have that 2,000 plus calories, but somehow you end up eating almost 2,800 calories. Again, you didn't control how much you ate. Now, some people can take this to the very far extreme and measure every single thing they put in their mouths. That works for some, that's great. Others measure some, don't measure others. And there's another group that doesn't measure anything. They just eat what looks right. There is no one right answer. It's whatever works for you, whatever fits your lifestyle and works the best. So that caloric control is something that everyone must find their own balance to of how to control it and what works for them. Moderation. Well, sure, everyone likes something that's not healthy for you. Well, can you completely stop eating it forever? Sure. Will you be happy about it? Probably not. So moderation, maybe have it a little bit here, a little bit there. Not every day, but something that's in moderation, smaller amounts and infrequently, but you still get the taste from it occasionally. And then you have variety. Variety in what you eat. One, you don't get bored that way. But two, by having variety, it makes sure you're hitting all the different macromolecules and micromolecules. So the five characteristics of a high quality diet. You're looking at adequacy, balance, caloric control, moderation, and variety. Now, what do those have to do with the science of nutrition? Well, the science of nutrition is all about trying to figure out how to make that work. What foods are healthy, which ones aren't? What should be in moderation in smaller amounts versus larger amounts? What varieties should you mix in? So a lot of this goes into the process of the scientific method. Now, the scientific method can be used for anything and everything. But what we're talking about in the scientific method, and there's going to be a whole video about this coming up as well. But the basis of the scientific method is you ask a question. And usually it's best if the question is about one particular thing, not a whole series, just one. Once you ask the question, you can do some background research. Try to figure out what you can about it. Once you figure out the background research, you can make a hypothesis. A hypothesis is an educated guess. Basically, you're guessing an answer to the question that you asked based on what you found in your research. Well, then you test the hypothesis. So you set up a series of tests to test that one question, that one thing you're trying to see. Once you finish testing your hypothesis, finish testing that one single variable, you can analyze the data, see what changed, what didn't change, what your results are. Once you've analyzed, you can make your conclusion. The conclusion is hopefully the answer to your question. I say hopefully because sometimes in a scientific study, you don't always get an answer to the question. It could be inconclusive, 
Or maybe it didn't quite work because there were two variables instead of one. So maybe they'll redesign and try again. But this scientific method is how you're looking at a lot of different foods, how they're developing new foods and combination things as well. But one of the biggest things is, by going through the scientific method, you can have a proven set of results that other individuals can go through the same process and get the same results. It's repeatable work. And a lot of times these studies are then published in peer-reviewed journals. Now, peer-reviewed journals are when your study is submitted, other scientists will also look at it. Sometimes they'll try to recreate, see if it works, or sometimes they'll simply look at it and say, yes, that is a sound procedure, that makes sense. But the reason this is important is not just publishing it out in somebody's blog, it's a set procedure. You publish, other people confirm the publication saying it's correct, and then it can be put out in the world. The reason that is important is because in today's day and age of digital media, anybody can post anything. It doesn't have to be verified. It doesn't have to be true. And if one study is put out there by somebody that didn't have sound means, maybe they're being sponsored by a particular company, then all of a sudden some influencer picks it up and starts spreading that around. Next thing you know, that's the next fad diet. But it wasn't based in anything scientifically proven. So it's always important to try and verify what you see. Now, a lot of times, you, well, I bet you've heard, oh, this is good for you, or that's good for you. Because there's a lot of experts in nutrition. And I say experts in quotes because while there are true experts that have gone to school, have studied, and do research in it, there are other people that claim to be experts that took one online class and think they know the entire thing about nutrition. Nutrition is an ever-evolving field. There's so much to learn, so much to know. One class simply can't cover it. People spend years studying about nutrition to become experts in the field. So think about where it's coming from. Think about what the information is. Is the person that's giving the information benefiting from what they're saying? Are they having their salaries being paid by companies that are sponsoring them? Because if a particular company is sponsoring an individual, that individual then promotes that company's items, is that really scientifically a true study or is it just them saying this because they're being paid by that company? These are all things to question and look into. There are tons of true legitimate studies and unfortunately there's tons of not legitimate studies. That's where it's so hard in today's world to figure out what to believe and what not to believe. So all I can say is think critically. Do a little research. See where the information came from. See if you can verify it. You may have heard, okay, here's an example. Red wine is good for you. So you have this advertisement saying a bottle of red wine is good for you every day. Eh, a bottle, really? Well, if you look in the studies, sure, there are particular chemicals in that red wine that are good for you. But how much do you really need? The advertisement is trying to get you to buy more because that's the purpose of advertising, buy more. So they're taking that little bit of truth and then just kind of blowing it up and saying, you know what, we're only going to focus on this one piece, not the whole big picture. So if something sounds too good to be true or something really aligns with what you believe in, say, hey, that's great, I love that. Just take a step back and make sure that, you know, where'd that information come from? Because nutrition and all of the factors that play into nutrition the entire industry is a multi-billion dollar industry. So think about that. Billions of dollars being poured into it to try to get you to do certain things. So eating is always a choice and sometimes can be a challenging choice, especially if you're trying to plan out meals for an entire week or an entire month. What meals to have, how to balance it. And all goes back to the science of what was healthy, what's best for your body or those you're feeding, and how do you balance everything out? So there's no one easy answer, unfortunately. I can't say, here's the perfect nutritional balance. You need to figure it out. And unfortunately, that's some trial and error sometimes. Doing some research, 
looking into studies and seeing what is the best course. But that's what we're trying to figure out. That's what we're trying to explore the course. So until our next video,